What's up, y'all? My name is JR, and for those of you who don't already know, I'm a huge movie and TV nerd. If you're new here, I appreciate you taking the time to check out my channel. I hope you'll consider sticking around and joining the film community I'm trying to build here on YouTube. So in today's video, I'm going to be giving my reaction and review of DC Films Aquaman and The Lost Kingdom. And just so we're clear, this video will contain some mild spoilers, so if you haven't seen the movie yet and you don't want to know anything that happens in it, you might want to exit this video right now. And with that being said, no more wasting time, let's get into it. Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom is an American superhero film based on the DC character Aquaman, produced by DC Films, Atomic Monster, and the Safran Company, and distributed by Warner Brothers Pictures. It is the sequel to Aquaman and the 15th and final installment in the DC Extended Universe. The film was directed by James Wan from a screenplay by David Leslie Johnson McGoldrick and stars Jason Momoa as Arthur Curry slash Aquaman alongside Patrick Wilson, Amber Heard, Yahya Abdul-Mateen II, Randall Park, Dolph Lundgren, Tamuera Morrison, Martin Short, and Nicole Kidman. In the film, Arthur must work with his half-brother Orm to prevent Black Manta from killing his family and using the cursed Black Trident to overheat the world while searching for the lost Seventh Kingdom of the Seas. Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom premiered at a fan event at The Grove in Los Angeles on December 19, 2023 and was released in the United States on December 22nd by Warner Brothers Pictures. And the film has largely received negative reviews from critics and, to this point, has only managed to gross about $138 million worldwide. Now, at the time of the making of this video, the movie has a menial 35% rating on Rotten Tomatoes based on 182 critic reviews with a much better audience score of 80%, and that's based on over 1,000 verified ratings. It has a rather mediocre meta score of 43 based on 31 critic reviews on Metacritic with an even more dismal user score of 3.7. And that's based on 122 user ratings. And finally, it has a 6.0 out of 10 on IMDb and that's based on almost 18,000 reviews. So this film starts off with a voiceover montage and I've seen that some people take issue with the film breaking the fourth wall in this way. I personally am not going to rip the film a new one for doing this, especially because the film does the exact same thing in the beginning of the first Aquaman movie. Now, I'm sure by now you realize that Black Manta is back for this film, and I'll say that I was a bit disappointed at this choice of villain, mainly because they could have taken this opportunity to introduce another one of Aquaman's foes instead. Although, with this film being the last in the DC Extended Universe, maybe the filmmakers didn't want to do that with the franchise coming to a close. Either way, I think the film could have been more enjoyable with a brand new villain to be Aquaman's main nemesis in this film. Now, there's a five-month time jump in the film, shortly after the movie starts, and I typically hate this kind of storytelling tool, mostly because I find it to be a cheat code of sorts, so that the writers don't have to be creative with the timeline of the story that's being told. Um, it's one thing if you have to jump years ahead, maybe because of an actor or a character's age, or you need backstory to understand how a particular character came to be who they are. You know, kind of like it was necessary in the first film to explain how Arthur, a.k.a. Aquaman, came to be. Uh, but in this case, there wasn't really a need for the time jump, in my opinion, or at least there was no need to superimpose it the way they did and bring it all to our attention. Uh, but that's just my two cents. But... In this movie, we get Aquaman trying to split his time between Atlantis and the surface, you know, uh, only to learn that, <laughs> you know, being king isn't all he thought it would be because his council won't really let him do anything. And, you know, meanwhile, we see that he's married Mira and that they have a son. We also see that Black Manta is still actively seeking revenge for his father's death. And while working with marine biologist Stephen Shin to find Atlantean artifacts, he comes across a black trident that ultimately possesses him with his creator promising to give him the power to finally destroy Arthur for good. We get Orm again in this film as well. In fact, the writers tried as hard as they could to not only have this film be a story of reconciliation between the two, but they also try to redeem Orm in this movie. You know, because after Black Manta 
attacks Atlantis and breaks into its auric- auriculum reserves. I don't know if I said that right or not, but you know, you guys know what I'm talking about if you've seen the movie. Um, in order to power Shin's Atlantean machines, Arthur learns that the usage of the, this particular auriculum emits high quantities of greenhouse gases, raising planetary temperatures and causing extreme weather and ocean acidification. And to learn where Black Manta is hiding, he needs Orm's help. So Aquaman breaks his brother out of the desert prison he was banished to for the actions in the first film in order to work with him to find the Lost Kingdom and vanquish Black Manta and, by extension, Necris, the undead ruler of the Lost Kingdom. Now, the film attempts to take a hard stance against global warming, which I was okay with in this particular case, uh, given that most of the main characters live in or nearby the ocean. I thought that environmental issues could be a part of the story without the film becoming an infomercial for environmental responsibility. So, though I know there are lots of people out there who are growing tired of wokeness being injected into films, I happen to think that every modern film has a touch of woke in it. And it's all about how you navigate that while you're telling the story that makes all the difference. Here, I was okay with it. I thought the filmmakers managed to get their point across in this case without being overly preachy. One thing I thought really did a disservice to the film was that the studio tried everything they could to minimize Amber Heard's presence in this movie. And don't get me wrong, I understand why they wanted to do that, but I don't think they should have sacrificed the story in order to make it happen. It felt like the movie was damn near recut in order to exclude her. And if it was, I don't know why they didn't just bite the financial bullet and full on replace her. I mean, the way I see it, she's either in the movie or she's not. And she was definitely in the movie, even though she only had like a handful of lines. So I feel like the filmmakers should have just gone all out. The movie cost $200 million. What's five or ten more? You know what I mean? And after all, it's the last movie in the DCEU anyway, right? Now, overall, I give this film a 60% or a 6.0 if you're thinking IMDb score. I understand that the filmmakers were up against a lot here in the making of this movie, and I have respect for what they tried to do in the face of such obstacles, even though I recognize that they didn't exactly succeed with flying colors in making a quality superhero film. I thought the movie was definitely longer than it had to be, even though, you know, most superhero movies these days are. And I also thought the dialogue was super corny. You know, I think they tried to make Aquaman's character feel more like a YouTube comedian than a superhero. And I know these superhero movies have gotten quite campy over the last decade or so, but this one was just too much. Like every five minutes had Momoa trying super, super hard to get a laugh. And, you know, maybe if he had spent less time trying to develop a tight 10, he could have kept this kid from being kidnapped, if you know what I'm saying. Um, But all in all, it wasn't the worst film in the DCEU I've I've ever seen, um, even if it failed to make an improvement on the original Aquaman movie. But what do you guys think? Have you seen Aquaman The Lost Kingdom yet? If you have, did you enjoy the movie? Let me know in the comments. And for those of you who might be new to the channel, be sure to like and share this video. If you really like the content, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. That way you'll be notified whenever I drop a new video. Also, be sure to go and check out themadscreenwriter.com for more television and film reviews and info on my upcoming film projects. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. I got screenplays to write. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.